Ba ha ba pixel sword. Ba ha ba pixel. In this tutorial, you, I'm talking about you, are gonna learn how to do the pixel sorting effect, famous in the world of glitch art <laughs> and data corruption. We are gonna do this completely procedurally in geometry nodes, and you better believe that the project files will be at cgmatter.com. Pixel sort. Pixel sort. Pixel sort. Okay. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Squarespace, and we're gonna talk about that later. Pixel sorting. Can we do it in Blender, and how easy is it? Yes, we can. It's not easy. Let's begin. Go to geometry nodes. Get rid of everything that isn't the cube, so we can make a geo nodes. And let's get rid of the thing. Replace it with a different thing. That's a grid that will represent our image. So right now we have two by two, four pixels. We're gonna need way more than that. Let's start with 200 by 200 and store some data on the cells. Use a image texture. Mona Lisa is... I don't know how copyright works. This feels like public domain. If you view it, it's gonna look like this, which ain't cool, cause we need to use the correct uh, coordinate system. Connect the UV map, boom, good to go. Just gonna stretch this vertically a bit. Let's say we have one and a half, and then accordingly, we need more pixels on the Y, cause it's taller. Right now, our pixels are just kinda like long rectangles. Let's kinda set a base resolution on the X. Then I'm gonna multiply however many pixels by the aspect ratio, which in this case is 1.5. Connect that in here. Maybe let's make the aspect ratio a parameter, so 1.5. Now we can uh, procedurally just kind of increase our resolution while maintaining square pixels. Now we need to go through with the algorithm. So I think I already explained it, but in case I was lazy, here's how we're gonna do it. This is basically a bunch of data of pixels that I'm gonna separate into rows. Each row is literally just a single line of pixels. Here I'm exaggerating the thickness. Here you can see we have like a single row, ideally of pixels. And then instead of just sorting each row individually, I'm going to separate it into chunks. So for example, for this row over here, I'm going to say this is a chunk. I'm going to say this black area of the hair is a chunk. Maybe the skin is a chunk. And I'm basically separating it in this case by luminance. And each of these sections is going to get independently sorted. So we're sorting this, this uh, subset of the row, then we're sorting this, etc. Basically, the bedrock of this effect is going to be using the sort elements node, which does this for us. Let's just sort pixels without breaking it into sections, just row by row. I want to sort elements of the faces because this is what's going to store the pixel data. In fact, let's just store the color of the pixels, which I can call pixel, stored on the faces. You can see that RGB over here. Going to sort elements. What metric do I want to sort by? Well, for now, I'm just going to say the brightness of the pixel. I can literally take the pixel, which we're going to treat as a vector, and then to say how bright is it, just take the length of this. It's basically turning the color into a black and white brightness map. I'm going to sort the face by this metric, which visually won't do anything because all I'm doing is I'm saying shuffle the indices, but it's still going to keep the same color. In fact, if I enable and disable this, you can see we get the same number of faces and all this. They're just sorted kind of based on luminance. So it's going to be close to zero. And then as we get to the end, it's going to be close to a length of one. What I have to do is I have to say change the pixel color depending on this sorting. I take this organized version and I'm going to sample the faces. And I want to say for this ordered version, what are the pixel colors now that we shuffle? Shuffle the color data, and then for the index, I'm literally just going to plug this in here. This is going to extract the color of the pixel once it has been shuffled. What I mean is now if I look at the geometry pre-sorting and look at this, we get kind of this gradient, which makes sense. It kind of starts dark over here, and then it gets brighter, but they are the colors of the original Mona Lisa, where we have these greens and these yellows and these like dark browns. Amazing. We just need to do this on a row per row level, which will kind of maintain the form a bit more. I'm going to do this by splitting this into a bunch of sections. And those edges we're gonna split by, since I wanna isolate a row, are gonna be exactly the edges that are going horizontally. Not vertically, but horizontally. I just need to know the direction that it's facing and check, is this a horizontal one, regardless of if it's left or right. To get this vector, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at the edge vertices, which is this one and this one. I'm going to subtract these, saying, how do we get from one to the other? Finally, because some of them might be positive, some of them might be negative, take the absolute value so that it's always pointing to the right. Now, how do we check if this is indeed horizontal? This is what the dot product is for. It just gives us the angle between two vectors. We take the dot product of this along with the vector facing horizontally, which is one on the X and then zero, zero. Specifically, to get this dot product to work, it's important to use normalized vectors. I'm going to normalize this. We maintain the direction, but now it's like a magnitude of one. And so this edge vector and the X vector, when they're aligned, it's going to be equal to one. Whereas if it's vertical, the 
dot product is going to be zero. So really all we need to do is check where is it greater than zero. That isolates the horizontal ones. And I'm going to split edges depending on this criteria. Ideally, these should now be separated into a bunch of islands. And I can check by then scaling elements like this. And you can see now it's kind of separating into these individual rows, which is great because now we can sort this on a per row level. And by the way, I just want to show that the pixels kind of stick onto this, which is why we can sort them individually. Split this into instances. The reason I'm doing this is it's very easy then to compute each individually. So I'm going to split the faces into instance groups. Right now, that's just going to be a single instance. Instead, I want to look at the mesh island saying which row, which separate island are we on and separate by that index. We have 299 instances, which should correspond with 200 times 1.5, which is 300. I guess we subtract one for some reason, but that should update dynamically. We can now process them individually because of this for each element zone, which lets you isolate things and handle them independently. For each geometry of the instance, process instance one, sorted instance two, sorted and do each row individually. And then this specific output, not the top one, but this one is going to join everything back together. Instead of sorting elements for this entire thing, I'm just going to steal this and move it inside the for each zone. So this is going to go here. I'm going to output the original thing on faces. We care about the color of, again, the pixel. And I'm just going to overwrite this. Do we split this into instances? In other words, we split it into rows. For each row, I'm going to sort these elements on faces. And they're only going to look within the row, not the full image. I'm then going to see what were the pixel colors now that they're sorted and then overwrite the original and then, you know, combine everything together. There's one crucial step missing here. And if you noticed it, good for you. That means you're really on the ball. If I now look at the pixel colors, we actually don't see anything, which is strange. To sort elements of the faces, we can't do instances, right? We need faces. So once we have an instance inside of here, we need to realize it, turn it into geometry, do this process and output it, which now when we look at it gives us something very similar, kind of this smearing horizontally effect. But this time you can almost tell it's like isolated row per row. There's a patch of skin here, 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 and here. Kind of exactly corresponds if you look to the left of, okay, there was skin there, there was skin there, and there, and there. Whereas up here, it should only be green, and indeed, it's only green. I'm not just a blob of pixels, okay? I'm a human being. A human being making a tutorial sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the best place to make a website. www.cgmatter.com is made and hosted with Squarespace. There are a couple of reasons that I do this. First one is because it is a subscription-based service, kind of like my own Patreon alternative. Squarespace has payment options for products, subscriptions. It can accept credit card, PayPal, whatever. There's also this asset library where if I upload audio, photos, videos, I can have that all cloud storage. But also in this modern age of AI, I feel like it's AI here, it's AI there. I don't know if I'm real anymore. It's all AI all the way down. They have an AI feature that you can use to write content and brainstorm. Head over to Squarespace to make a website. And once you have that and it's good, you can use this link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now I said the last thing, instead of doing each row, we're going to take that row and further divide it into those threshold chunks. Take this black section, sort it. Take this white section, sort it. And then we just throw it inside of this logic here. Let's just take all of this nonsense and make it a node group. Call this the sorter. That is all that it will ever amount to. And really all we need to do now is change the logic of this splitting to further subdivide. So here's what I'm planning. The algorithm I'm going to use, going to take this like black and white luminance map. And then I want to say isolate dark areas and isolate white areas. I can look at the brightness and see where's the brightness bigger than a certain number and where is it less than a certain number. So here you can see we'd be sorting the skin individually from everything else. And that's going to give it a bit more cohesion. You could also do a bit of blurring before we do this greater than, which will like smooth this out. So now what I need to do is I also need to split based on this threshold. There should be kind of a gap over here because it goes white to black over here, over here, etc. Well, luckily there is a node literally for this. It's called face boundaries or something like that. What it does is it takes groups, in other words, saying the white pixels, the black pixels, and it's going to extract these boundaries that say exactly where do we split them. Well, this is going to be our group ID. This just tells us black and white pixels. I believe we can split by this like horizontal row metric or, or we can split by this boundary. So either of them accounts for a split. Yeah, the moment I do that, we've now done a proper pixel sort. Note that if I don't do the boundary, we get something like this. If we include the boundaries, we get something like that. And then interestingly, if we don't do it by row, we get kind of this 
dithering, dithering is not the right word. We get this, posterizing, that's the name. The way we did this is fully procedurally. Fine, cool, who cares? We care because now we can change the criteria of this thresholding. We can also animate this and get this kind of effect. Additionally, our sort criteria was pretty arbitrary. Remember, we're sorting based on the luminance of the pixels. That could have been anything. In fact, what we can do is we can take this and reverse it. Instead of taking the length, I want it to be sorted by negative luminance. So instead of black to white, white to black, just take this, multiply it by negative one. We don't need to be precious about this. And when we do that, we now get this inversion. So let's make that a parameter. One, negative one. They're kind of inverses of each other. This procedural approach also lets us custom on the fly modify the density of this. So it's still doing it row by row and threshold section by threshold section. Let's maybe input something other than the Mona Lisa. And also, 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 instead of rows, we can do columns. I'm going to turn this into a y-axis calculation. Now we have this kind of uh, vertical sorting, but I want to do a different image. So let's just swap this out. Here I have a picture of a guy. I got it closer to one. Here we've sorted this. I want to do it horizontally. And remember, we can do all these inversions. We can do thresholding, which will be interesting since this is a very black and white image. And I saved the best for last. This also works with video, right? This logic just takes an image and does things. If we change that data into a video that changes every frame, who cares? What do I got? I have this, which is basically a GIF I made. Let's see. Maybe not the best choice, but you can see it's like updating on the fly. The way you do this with video, by the way, is you want to say the frame number, which frame we're evaluating, is going to be the current active frame. If I play this, it kind of goes in real time. Amazing. Let's kind of change the thresholding of this. Works amazing with video. By the way, notice that every single time I have to like play with this aspect ratio, that in itself can also be proceduralized and automated. Instead of like putting an image in here and then like swapping it every single time, this can also be outsourced to a node. So this image basically outputs this image data type that tells us which image texture are we using. So now if I swap this here, it will just work. And then the beautiful thing about this is that there's a image info node. What that image info node tells you, height and the width, we just care about the aspect ratio, which is width over height. 1920 by 1080 turns into 16 by 9. I think so. The width divided by the height, replace this like 0.7 value by this. Clearly that's inverted. So we're going to flip it. And now it is always going to be the correct aspect ratio. Uh, even if we, well, fuck. <laughs> Hopefully I have an auto save. Please tell me I have an auto save. I do. I do. Amazing. Save your projects, people. What? the frick was I saying? Even if I swap out the image, so let's just bring in, I don't know, we'll bring in this picture of me. We swapped it out. It's the perfect aspect ratio. Let's swap it again. And now it's the 16 by nine. It's looking gross as hell. You can't tell what's going on. That is probably because we need to mess with this threshold. It's beautiful. To get clarity here, by the way, what you would want to do is you'd want to say certain groups, certain rows and subdivisions should not get sorted. Maybe, maybe let's implement that. Let's also further divide this into two groups, the ones that get sorted, the ones that don't. So I'm just going to separate geometry by instances, but I want to say keep like half of them. No, not that. <laughs> uh, keep half of them. So I'm going to take a Boolean saying probability of 0.5, connect that in here. And now we have this whole mess. Some of them get sorted and then the ones that don't should be joined back together. So I'll explain this in a second. So they should get joined back together. What we're saying here is that we split to instances fine, but then I'm filtering them by a 50-50 chance where some of them get sorted and then some of them don't. And we join them and this probability can also get modified. So this just makes it more visible. Probably not the best way to do this. We can in fact filter by the brightness. So in this case, we'd actually split by faces. Here, I would separate the faces based on kind of our luminance metric, I guess. Oh, right here, we have it. Where is it greater than or less than a certain threshold? And now you can see we've isolated a certain section. So this is kind of the bright section. We don't want that over here. That should be getting sorted. And then everything else can be combined at the end here. So now we have the sorting, but it's also more visible what's going on here. If we do like an inversion instead of greater than, we have less than. We've now done kind of this like flipping thing. Let's do a inverse sort. Let's do also a vertical sort. So change this to one. Now we have this. It looks like I'm in some kind of hacker movie. Fine. Let's swap out the video. I have this like flipbook render that you cannot tell what is going on here. Looks kind of interesting, I guess. There's many optimizations you can do here. But that that's the thing. That's the thing. Okay, busy work. Busy work. Hopefully you learned something about pixel sorting. Very cool glitch art effect. Very, very data mush. Very concert visual. Actually went my fiance.
and I went to this like concert of weird, I wouldn't even call it music. It was literally sounds. Like that was the point of it. And their visuals were data moshed and pixel sorted to fuck. Like hey, you could not even tell what the source thing is. So I think that probably indirectly inspired this. I, d I didn't really consider that until now, but I think that is the case. So hopefully you learned something.